Hi, I'm Nadej Sezana and I go by Nan. I help coaches stop stress eating one craving at a time without being miserable. Are you feeling frustrated and defeated every time a craving hits? Well, if so, keep watching because I've got a game changing refrain that will revolutionize your approach to cravings. It's interesting because when we revolutionize our approach to cravings, there are at least three benefits that I see. The first one is increased awareness. It means that you're more aware, you get more aware of your emotional and mental state, which means that you'll know why you're experiencing the cravings in the first place. That's the first thing. The second thing is that you reduce the guilt that you could be feeling if you reacted impulsively to your cravings, right? So you reduce the guilt. And the third thing that I see is that you um, get better at decision making because you make more mindful choices. You think before you act rather than just automatically reacting to the craving and getting the food and putting the food into your mouth without you actually wanting fully consciously to do that. So if you're like most of the coaches that I coach on that topic, here's what may be happening to you. Let's say there are chips and when you see the chips, you notice in your body the craving. You notice that you want the chips. Maybe you start to salivate, maybe you start thinking about them and really hyper focusing on the chips. And maybe what goes on in your brain sounds like, oh no, not this craving again. And perhaps when you think that thought or no, not this craving again, you feel annoyed. And chances are that when you feel annoyed, you actually grumble to yourself or out loud, maybe. And in your head, you blame the craving for being here. You wish it wasn't here. And maybe you give in and eat the chips in the hope of having the craving disappear. And as always, our behavior has an impact in our life. So here, when we react to the craving, because we're thinking, oh no, not this craving again, because we're feeling annoyed, chances are that as a result, we solidify the pattern of obeying the craving, instead of, as I said before, being more mindful, being better at decision-making, making a decision that truly serves us. And what always blows my mind and my clients is to notice that the annoyance has nothing to do with the chips. The annoyance that we feel has nothing to do with the craving that we also feel right in our body. The annoyance doesn't come from the emotion. The annoyance doesn't come from the food outside of us. The annoyance that we feel can only come from one place, what we think about the chips and the craving that it triggers, right? The annoyance is only coming from this thought, oh, not this craving again. Because we're thinking that thought, oh, not this craving again, we're feeling annoyed. There wouldn't be any annoyance if we chose any other thought. But because we've decided, perhaps unconsciously, to think, oh, not this craving again, then of course we feel annoyed. And this is good news because then if we know that it's coming from that thought, if the annoyance that leads us to actually obeying the craving and overeating, if this annoyance is caused by a, a sentence in our brain, then we have complete power over it. We have no power of about the, the, the chips out there in the world, right? We can't make them disappear. We can't make an emotion disappear either in our body. We are humans, okay? And as a human being, of course, we're going to feel cravings like annoyance or any other emotions, right? So we have no power there in the fact that there are things in the world, there are things in our body, right? But we have complete power over the way we choose to interpret what's happening outside there in the world and inside our body or emotional life. And here are the three steps that I love to take my clients through. The first one is noticing. That's exactly what we've done, right? We've noticed that the sentence in our brain is creating annoyance that leads us to actually obey the craving and that keeps us in this loop of, I've got a craving, I've obeying the craving, I'm overeating, which is not what I want. I want to stop stress eating, right? So we've noticed this pattern, super important step. It's just like switching the light on in a dark room. If we can't see what's there, we can't tidy it, right? It's exactly the same thing. We've noticed that a sentence in our brain that we believe is causing this loop, right? The second step is for us to 
question, question the thought, right? And the third step, which we'll go into in a minute, is to decide. So let's have a look at the second step, questioning. So we've noticed we have a craving. We've noticed that we've got a sentence about that craving in our body, which is, oh, not this craving again. So here are three questions that you could ask yourself that you could want to answer for yourself. The first one is, what's wrong with having a craving for chips? And it's a real question. Okay, so oh, what's wrong? No, <laughs> I'm really seriously asking you to consider answering that question. What's wrong? Okay, if you're having an emotion. What really do you see as wrong with this emotion in your body? That's the first thing. The second question could be, what's wrong with having several cravings for chips, right? Because we've noticed the sentence was, oh, not this craving, again. So the second question is about the again, right? What's wrong with having several cravings for chips? The third question you could be asking yourself is, if I were not annoyed with my cravings, how would I like to experience this situation? We're not changing the fact that we're having cravings. We're not changing the fact that there are chips. We're not changing the fact that we have a craving for the chips. But what do we want to think and what do we want to feel when we're noticing the chips and when we're noticing the craving for the chips, right? How do we want to experience this situation? We're not changing the situation. We're changing the way we interpret it. We're changing the way we react to the situation. And here are three thoughts that you might consider adapting or adopting for you to experience the situation in a different way. Here's the first one. I'm noticing a craving and that's okay. What if we normalized the fact that we're having emotions and that among those emotions, there can be cravings, right? And we have nothing to do with it, right? We don't have to do anything about that. That could be the first sentence. I'm noticing a craving and that's okay. The second thought that you could want to consider is I don't have to obey the craving if I don't want to. So it's really reminding you yourself of your goal of not stress eating, of not obeying any craving that you have, but of taking a step back. I don't have to obey the craving if I don't want to, because very often we experience this craving as some, an, an order, something that we have to um, to react to, we have to overeat, we have to obey the craving, we have to eat the food, the chips, if we're having a craving, but it's not true, right? There are the chips, there's the craving, but we have complete control over our reaction. So that could be the second sentence, I don't have to obey the craving if I don't want to. I can decide again. Sentence number three could be, welcome craving, I was expecting you. And it means that you're fully aware that as a human being, of course, you're going to have cravings. And in French, I love to use the sentence, the, the, the phrase rather, the word envie for cravings. And I love that because it sounds more in innocent than compulsion or something like that. And it sounds more innocent to me <laughs> because it's often the way we describe you know, a, a pregnant woman's uh, wanting to have strawberries for in winter, which is the stereotypical story that we have. I never did that, by the way. Don't know about you, but anyway. So, and it sounds like something innocent, something kind of cute, etc. But also, and that's the main thing for me, envie, if you separate the word into two words, it's envie, alive, right? And so having cravings is part of life. You wouldn't be alive if you didn't have any cravings. You wouldn't stay alive if you didn't have any desire. All right. So it's a good thing, actually, to have cravings. It's a good thing, actually, to want things, to want food. Of course, how would you survive without eating food? Right. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing to want other things in life, too. OK. Otherwise, what would be the point? All right. So we can accept that we're having cravings. We can welcome the cravings and we can also decide not to obey them. Right. But if we're prepared because we're ready to welcome the cravings, then we can think ahead of time of different ways to react to the craving. It could be, yes, I, so from time to time, I'm going to want to overeat, but from time to time, I'm going to want to say, no, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being, uh, for, for wanting me to survive, but not today, I'm good. Thank you. Right, so that's the third sentence you could consider. Welcome craving. I was expecting you. Right, so if, this video was helpful to you, wonderful. 
please share. That's one thing you could be doing. If you think that it was super helpful to you, share it with somebody else who's struggling with stress eating. The second thing that you want, could want to do is actually uh, consider taking a step further and um, taking the next step and book a call with me. You could book a stress eating freedom call, a one hour call where we're going to specifically focus on you and a particular time when you tend to stress eat and what you could be doing um, instead of overeating. At the end of this session, you'll have a clear plan on what to do and we'll be focusing on the food. Right. You could also benefit from a stress eating strategy call where you could see exactly where you are right now and where you could go, where you could be in three months time. Right. So what would be the different steps for you to reduce your stress eating? Right. So this is my offer to you. If you're interested, you have the links below this video. And I hope you're going to have a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye bye.